welcome to the introduction to pivot tables. Today will be a very short tutorial for beginners and people who are new with pivot tables on how to get started. So to get started, what is a pivot table? Now a pivot table is a really handy feature, a really powerful feature in Excel that allows us to drag and drop information from raw data tables and turn it into summarized data very, very quickly. So one of the things you can do is summarize data. With just a couple of clicks of the button and dragging and dropping, you can turn raw data into a table like this, or you can turn it into a bit more of a detailed table where it actually creates calculations and you can analyze data more clearly. And once you've mastered the table, you can actually go into the step of pivot charts. And this is where you visualize data. And once you put all this together, you can actually see trends in your data a whole lot more clearer than you have ever before. So. Without further ado, let's get started into the actual pivot table itself. Okay, so you can see here that we've got a blank worksheet in Excel, but to create a pivot table, we need some data to work with. And it can't be data that's just sporadically all over a worksheet. It needs to be in some sort of table format. And you can see down below, I've got another tab here, which is called the summary tab. And this is an example set of data that we can use to create a pivot table. Now this data is, a, is based on a sales company that is selling three types of products, laptops, desktops, and tablets. There's some other sales information here, such as the date of the sale, the name of the person purchasing the product, the city where it was purchased, and some other details about the model of the product. On the right hand side, you've got the typical sales information, such as the quantity, the sales price, tax, cost, and so on. And just to let you know, if you want to work through this data set while watching the video, the data is available and I'll put a link in the description below. Looking further into the information, I can actually see that it's pretty significant. So scrolling down to the bottom of the data, it actually goes to about two and a half thousand lines. So you can imagine this would be pretty difficult to analyze in Excel. So using a pivot table is a really great way of going through this data. So let's get started and create the pivot table. And the first thing you've got to make sure is that every column has a heading. And you can see here in column G, I've got the state here, but there's no heading. Now, if I tried to create the pivot table using this data, it would come up with an error. So I'm going to, I'm going to add the state field in or the state heading into this field and press enter. Now, how to create the pivot table is you have to highlight the data that you want the pivot table to be created from. So I'm going to do this by highlighting the entire data set and go up to the ribbon and press insert. On the left hand side, there's an option for pivot table. I'm going to select this option. A pop-up table will appear. It's now asking me to confirm the range of cells where my pivot table is grabbing data from. And then it's going to ask me, do I want to put this pivot table in an existing worksheet or the existing worksheet or a new one? And I'm going to leave it on new worksheet and press OK. You can see a new sheet has appeared with my pivot table with no fields currently in there. And on the right hand side, this is what we call a field list. And you can see up in the ribbon, it's highlighted here. This field list contains all the columns that we had in the previous table. You may have also noticed that when you create a pivot table, there's a couple more options up in the ribbon. Pivot table analyze and design are now available. Now, if you select outside of the pivot table, these options will disappear as well as that field list. To make them come back, you just simply click into the pivot table and it all appears again. And if the field list doesn't appear, you can actually go to this section over here on the right hand side and toggle off and on the field list and you can see that it will come back on when you select it. So let's go ahead and start to fill out the pivot table. The first thing we need to do is to get a field and put it into the pivot table. Now to do this, we simply go to the pivot table fields and select the field that you want to put into the pivot table. I'm going to use the product type. So I'm going to simply select the checkbox next to that name. And you can see the pivot table has now entered those products into the table. Another way of doing this, if I check it off, is I can actually drag that field and put it into one of these boxes down below. There's the rows, which puts it down vertically, and the columns that put it across horizontally. So let's do that. We'll put the product type and put it into rows. 
and you can see it says exactly what it did before when we click that checkbox. Now, like I said, if we drag that by holding our left mouse button and dragging it into columns instead, you can see that the products go across the top. To further fill out this pivot table, I'm going to get an extra field and drag it back in. So this time I'm going to select the state like I did before with the left mouse button, but this time I'm going to drag it back down into the rows. And now you can see that the pivot table is starting to fill out with all the states down the left hand side and the types of products across the top. Now a pivot table wouldn't be complete if we don't have some solid data that goes into the values section. And this time I'm going to get the total sales value. And again, I'm going to drag it. I like dragging. You can keep clicking those checkboxes if you like, but I'm going to grab it with my left mouse button and bring it into the values section. What this does is it fills out the middle section of the pivot table. So you can see here, again, we've got the products across the top, the states down the left, and now the sales values in total for those states. You can see here that they don't come up automatically as dollars or currency. So we're gonna go and change that by going into the values section. And you can see in most pivot tables, there's a little down arrow with some more options with just about every field you use. This time I'm going to go into the values click that down arrow and go into the value field settings. Here's a bunch of options here where you can actually change the heading of the field. So instead of saying sum of sales value because it's actually summing it up, I'm just gonna put total sales, changing the name. Also in the number format, I wanna change this to a currency and we'll take away those decimal points just to clean it up and press okay. Press okay again and you can see that the value field has now turned into currency. As you can see, our pivot table is starting to take shape and you can play around with these fields to get whatever analysis you need to be done. So for me, I'm gonna actually swap out the state by taking the field from the rows and to take it out, all you simply do is drag it back to the fields list. Now, instead of state, I'm gonna put in the city. I'm gonna drag the city name and put it back into the rows. And now instead of states, I've got all the cities and the sales of each of those products within every city. But we've got this other section here in the pivot table fields, which is filters. And this is where you can analyze the data even more. So I'm gonna grab back that state field and I'm gonna drag it into the filters section. And you can see it's now appeared at the top of the pivot table. At the moment it's selected all, but this is where you can actually filter the data to a little bit more of a concise data set. So let's show you how that's done. I'm just going to go into that little drop down filter next to state and now all the, all the state options appear. At the moment you can only select one at a time, but if you do want to select multiple, you can actually select it here by clicking that checkbox. In this instance, I'm going to check California. And now you can see that pivot table has now been filtered to California alone. Very, very handy tool and it allows you to an analyze a lot quicker than you would if you're using Excel without pivot tables. Now, if you want to put all of this into one pivot table, you can. You can actually nest fields within each other. To show you how this works, I'm going to simply grab that state field out of the filters where I put it in originally, and I'm gonna drag it back down into the rows. The green line shows whether you want it before or after city. In this instance, I'm gonna put it before the city. And you can see now that in the bold are all the states, and it sums up all the values of the cities that fall within their states. This is really handy. Now, we did have the filter on states before, and it's disappeared because we've now put it in the rows but you can still filter if you want to make this data set a little bit more concise. To do this, you go to the top of the pivot table and you can see under the row labels, there's an option for filter. So I'm going to select this filter icon and it's currently selected state. But if you wanted to filter by city, you could actually change it to city and the options would change down below. But I'm going to keep it on state and maybe select California, Colorado, and Florida and press OK. 
And you can now see that this pivot table has pivot tape, pivoted the data just to those three states. Again, a really handy tool to really go through a lot of data very, very quickly. Now I'll just go through one more example to show you how this works, and then we'll show you how to add new data to the pivot table and refresh. So I'm going to take out all these fields and start again by dragging them out of the pivot table and we've got our blank pivot table available again. So this time I'm going to bring in the day. So I'm going to bring in the date and you can see it's automatically come up with the months of the year, January to November. Now I'm missing the December data and we'll add that shortly. But let's bring in some sales again and this time we'll bring in the quantity value. Over here we'll put it into the values like we did before and it's automatically summed the quantity. Now you don't have to do sum, sometimes you want to do count. So to do that, again, just about with every option, you can select that down arrow and it'll give you some more options. In the value field settings, instead of sum, you can actually go to count or average or any other calculation that you might see fit. But I'm going to leave it as sum and press OK. As mentioned before, Excel assumes what type of date format you want to see it in. In this instance, they've selected month. But you can see next to the month, there's a little crosshair. You can select that crosshair and it'll open up the values and show you by each of the days. You can select it again to close that up. But if you wanted to see it in a different format, all you have to do is right click somewhere into one of those dates and go down to the options and select ungroup. That puts it into the format that your table had originally had it. To change it back, and you might want to group it up, and in this instance I will, I'll right click, instead of ungroup I'm going to go to group, and there's a whole bunch of options. You can actually select days, months, quarters, or a combination of these by holding down control. But I'm just going to select the months and press OK. And now you can see that my data has the sum of quantity for each of the months where I have data, which only goes to November. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how to update this pivot table and refresh it with new data. So I've got the December data here on a separate tab. So I'm going to copy and paste it into the summary tab and refresh the pivot table. So let's go do that. I'm going to go over to the table. I don't need the headings again. So I'm going to highlight the December data. Right click, copy. Go to the summary tab and go all the way to the bottom. You can see I've got to, down to the 30th of November. I'm going to right click in here and paste the values. You've got to make sure, and this is something to be clear, is that this, the, the style or the format of the cells have to be the same for each of the columns, or else it could cause some errors. So now I'm going to go back into my pivot table and refresh this data. To do this, I'm going to go up to the pivot table analyze tab that's now available and there's now a refresh option. If you select the down arrow, you can refresh this pivot table alone, or you can refresh all the pivot tables in your worksheet if you have multiple. So I'm just gonna press refresh, and nothing happened. Where's my December data? Now, if you remember right at the beginning, we selected the table and the range of data where my pivot table is coming from. You can change this by going over to the change data source in the ribbon, and selecting change data source. As you can see, it's going back to my summary tab and, and telling me that it's going down to row 2407, which is where the November data finishes. But I wanna expand this. So I'm gonna grab the data again and make sure I select the entire table. So select the data, and now you can see I'm going right to the bottom of the table, which includes my new December data, and press OK. Now I go back to my pivot table and you can see the December data has automatically appeared. Now all of the data has updated in my pivot table, including all the other fields. So I'm going to drag and drop a few extra fields just to show you once again. You can grab the date field, put it up into the columns, and now you've got the dates across the top. We're going to bring down the product type and put it into rows. So now you can see the quantity of products that were sold by month for each of the different product types. And now I'm going to nest in the model type of this product. And you can see, once again, it's broken down the sales into those product types and models. 
and it's really a handy tool to navigate through the data. So far today, we have gone through the introduction of pivot tables, and we've gone through the basics of getting started on our journey. But there's so much more to learn, and I've got some future videos with some further tips and tricks on pivot tables. Just a taste, I'll bring up one of them now, and you can see here that I've started to customize my pivot tables with my own color design. I've added some charts, and I've also added some slices where you can actually filter your charts and your pivot tables how you see fit. So keep an eye out for those videos in the future, and hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial to get you started with pivot tables. See you next time.